Hi, in this brief video I just want to talk about how the Greeks treated the, the native Thracians. Now the Thracians had nothing to do with Greece. They were not a Greek tribe, they were called a barbaric tribe. Of course there was nothing but barbaric about them, in fact. They had a great civilization. Now the first encounter we get is from Homer. Now in fact Odysseus, or Ulysses, when he, when he was returning from Troy, he landed there and he massacred an entire town of Kikoni, the, the, the Kikonian tribe. He massacred them. Right, and um, he even got their priest, Maron, the high priest, who was, a, who was an educated man. And he forced him to deliver talents of, of money to let him go, sort of ransom. And then they counterattacked. The Thracians counterattacked and they killed several Greeks. And, Odysseus was forced to go back to his ships and sail away. Now, later on in the seventh, in the seventh or sixth century BC, perhaps even in the late eighth, eighth, seven hundred fifty, seven hundred, six hundred, eight BC, the Greeks started colonizing the area of Hagiligi, the coastal line from Hagiligi up to Byzantium, and from Byzantium up to the Danube River and the Black Sea. The entire Aegean coast and the Black Sea coast up to the Danube, they started colonizing all that. Now, that means killing the native people. Now, they drove, they drove away all these people, they massacred them in order to, to, to create a colony. And the, the people who did that were people from Ebia, Andros, and several islands, Athens. Uh, in the uh, in the sixth century BC, uh, Miltiades the Elder, he sailed from Athens and he landed in the Hesonesos, which is near Gallipoli, and he massacred the Thracians there. And he built a wall and he kept the rest of them out. So again, he killed and killed Thracians. Um, in uh, after the after the Persian Wars, um, the uh, the Greeks. The, the Athenians and their allies, Athens was the great power, they built a colony near Amphipolis. And the Thracians counterattacked. They didn't like people in Roshan on their territory. And they counterattacked and they massacred 10,000 Greeks, according to 5th uh, century BC historian Fugilidia, which was a complete tragedy. 10,000 dead? Could that be? Could these figures be right? Anyway, and in the in roughly 375 BC, the Greeks of Amphia moved um, inland and they massacred several Thracians. They killed many of them. And they counterattacked. They ambushed the Greeks and they massacred 30,000 of them. And they almost captured Amphia itself had not the Athenian fleet arrived. Um, Iphigrates who was an Athenian general with his mercenary force, landed in Thrace and he massacred the, he practically massacred the Thracians. Um, Philip, Philip, Philip of Macedon massacred the Thracians. He marched inland from Macedon and he even reached the area of Plovdiv and he built Philippopolis and other colonies. And he massacred the Thracians, and later on he even reached the Danube River, and uh, in one of the battles he was wounded by the Trebali tribe. So Philip dies, and uh, and if just a few months later on, Alexander is forced to to face a, a revolt by the Thracians, and he moves in. And the first battle, they throw a couple of wagons at it, and um, the Macedonians avoid the wagons and then they massacre the Thracians with hardly any casualties. And in the second battle, they, they massacre the Trevalians, the, the, the northern Thracian tribes, in a big battle. Philip loses some 50 men and they lose, I don't know, thousands of men. And then, then Alexander besieges the king in a small island on the Danube River. Right, and after that, he forces the Thracians to become hostages, mercenaries. So he gets the elite. So what Alexander did was he got the elite of Thrace. 
He turned them into mercenaries and hostages at the same time. He had them fighting at the, at the front line, which means that most of them were killed by the Persians, saved the Greek lives, and then he had them garrison uh, outposts in the far corners of the, of, of the empire which means that most of them would be killed by the Scythian tribesmen, or some of them would die of lack of nutrition. Some of them would die of the lack of nutrition. Uh, some of them would die from raids. They were still hostages, and they fought on the front line, which, mean, which meant less casualties for the Macedonian kingdom, more casualties for Thrace, and the casualties would be the elite. So it was a good way of exterminating, exterminating an entire race. That's Alexander the Great. And um, later on, uh, Alexander, when Alexander died in 323 BC, he was succeeded by his good friend Lysimachus. And Lysimachus invaded Thrace with some 7,000 men. They had revolted. The Thracians had revolted soon after the death of Alexander the Great again and he landed there with a, a small force of like 7,000 men and he started massacring the, th the Thracians and he overthrowed them since at least um, a couple of years later maybe 10 years later and he um, reached Danube again and in the um, 200 and the er in the early um, first century BC the Greeks were actually defeated by the Thracians. Lysimachos was actually captured alive and his army obliterated by a Thracian king called Romichedis. And Romichedis let Lysimachos go. He said he can go free uh, just as long as you promise that he won't fight me again. And of course Lysimachos broke his promise again and he started killing the Thracians again and again and again. Right. And not long after that uh, Thrace, as, as well as mainland Greece, was overrun by the Gauls. And during that period, the Greeks lost control of Thrace, apart from the few colonies mainly on the coastline. Right. And later on, uh, King Philip V, he allied himself to Hannibal Barker when Hannibal Barker was fighting Rome. And at the Romans' behest, the Thracians attacked Macedon, and the Macedonians beat them. Which meant more massive, which meant Thracian losses again and again. Now, not long after that, the Second Macedonian War took place when Rome fought Macedon in Macedonia. And again, the Thracians fought the Macedonians at the behest of, of the Roman Republic. And again, King Philip massacred them. Uh, during this defeat, during the, the critical battle of uh, Kinos Kefalem, King Philip may have been defeated, but many of his soldiers were not even Greeks. They were Thracian mercenaries who fought the front line and they were massacred again and again and again. Right, and later on, King Philip tried to rebuild his army. And how did he do that? He invaded Thrace again. And he started massacring the Thracians. And he's built a few colonies. Um, and then, it was at the battle, and the third was defeated. Now, when the Romans were retreating from the great victory at Magnesia, the Thracian tribes ambushed and killed many Romans during the retreat, but still they suffered several casualties. Now, later on, uh, King Philip's, that's the fifth son, Perseus took control of the Macedonian um, Empire and he fought against Rome again. And most of his frontline mercenary troops were again Thracians, and the Romans massacred them again and again at Semelius Lepidos, 168 BC. So it was basically a repetition of what happened at Kinos Kefalet in 197 BC. So again, we see Macedonians being massacred. And then the pseudo Philip revolted again in 148 BC. Again, most of his troops were not even Greeks, they were Thracians fighting on the front line, and they were massacred by the Romans again at the same place, at Bithyna. Just 
just 20 years after the first Battle of Bithna. Right. And uh, well, after that, the Romans take over. And during the reigns of uh, Augustus, during the reigns of uh, Claudius, the Romans massacred them again and again. We see Marcus Crassus uh, moving into Thrace, massacring the people. Those revolts that is. Um, we see um, Lucius Piso fight them during the, during the reign of uh, Augustus. We see revolts during the, the age of Claudius, and again they were defeated. Uh, as the years passed, in the, um, in the 7th century AD, Thrace, of course, was part of the Eastern Roman Empire, or Byzantium. Now, in 685 AD, I mean, already parts of northern Thrace were colonized by Slavic tribes. But, of course, there were still Romans and Thracians at the north. And um, most of the Thracians, Romans and Greeks, were in the south, started speaking Greek, of course. Right, and what happened? The Bulgars invaded, they defeated Emperor Constantine V on the Danube River. And the Bulgars, who were a Turkic tribe, took control of what's today northern Bulgaria, or northern Thrace, north of the Hems River, up to the Danube, and they colonized it. So we see Slavs merging with the Turkic Bulgars. Now the native Thracians disappeared. They stopped speaking Thracian. Now in the south, the Thracians also somehow disappeared. They, 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 they spoke Greek or Latin in the south. That's, that's below the Danube, that's below the Hamas uh, mountain range, or the Tsilasic line. Right. So by the late 7th century AD, Thrace ceased to exist. There were the Turk Slavs in the north and the Greco Roman. Greco, Roman, and other ethnicities comprising the Eastern Roman Empire and the South. Now, Thrace had a great uh, civilization of its, own, of its own. They were not barbarians, as the Greeks and the Romans tried to present them to be. Um, they had wise men. Um, they had many wise men. They built amazing tombs like those at Gazaluk, those at Alexandrovo. Um, they had wise men like uh, Vizinas, um, like uh, Orpheus, um, um, they, built, they, they built amazing uh, tombs, um, beehive tombs, with amazing decorations inside. They were masters of the art of um, blacksmith. They were master blacksmiths. Uh, they created jewellery, like, like, like those exhibited in um, ba uh, Basatik. Um, and they had many wise men, including, and they had some, some um, princes. Some of the princes actually um, intermarried with Greeks. Some of them uh, became benefactors. One of them built a temple somewhere in uh, Epidavros, Olympia. Um, So the Thracians were a great civilization. Now, they existed at least before the, the, the age of Homer, or that is, before the age of the, the Trojan War. That's uh, 200 BC, uh, 1200 BC, and they lasted until the late 7th century AD. And then somehow they became extinct. Now, no one knows how, how that could happen. But part of the answer of how that happened was how the Greeks and the Romans later on tried to exterminate them. Like, like the way Alexander the Great forced them to become hostages and mercenaries, garrison troops of, 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 of outposts somewhere in the east where they were exposed to hunger, uh, barbarian tribes. And he took the elite. He had them fighting. Them. Not only did he kill off the elites, he had them fighting on the front line. 
So that, that was it. That was a slow way of exterminating them, apart from from those who were killed in the revolts. Right. So that's that's a brief outline of uh, the history of Thrace. One of the wise Thracians was called Zamolxis, and Zamolxis used to be a student of uh, Pythagoras. So when he gathered all the information he could from Pythagoras, he became a sort of a tyrant. He took advantage of his, of his knowledge. I mean, he knew a bit more than the average Thracian would, and he took advantage of that. And he became a demigod, a shaman priest. One of the wise men was, of course, Mara. Mara. Of, of a Thracian city called Ismaros. Ismaros was a city sat by Odysseus. So, Odysseus, or Ulysses, as we said, held him at ransom. The priest, who was a well educated man, Mara, had to pay a talent of gold and he had to give him precious wine in order to be, to be set free. I mean, the rest of the town was destroyed massively. So the priests, well, the priests always had a sort of um, uh, special status. But then again, he had to pay the talent of gold, talent of gold, and sweet wine, which was a rare commodity at that time. Supposing coming from a war, from big war, the Trojan War. And so, so that's how Maron got away with it. Now, Salaxis was a wise man, but he took advantage of, of, of his power. And then, of course, there's the Dacians. The Dacians are also considered to be part of um, the Thracian world. We see the Gevalos, we see the, 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 great, um, the great capital, San Misegedusa, and how all these people were massacred by Trajan. Trajan massacred them, the Dacians. I mean, we're talking about a complete holocaust. So what is today? Southern Romania <laughs> was completely massacred and colonized by the Romans. And still, the Romanian language is close to the Italian Latin language because of that conquest today. Dacians, another Thracian tribe. Another Thracian tribe are the Bithynians. The Bithynians lived on the, the other side of uh, Asia Minor. And the Bithynians were attacked by Xenophon and his mercenaries. During the year 399 BC, he killed several of them as well. And um, Alexander the Great's commanders attacked the Bithynians, and so did the Simaos. But I think the Bithynians got the best of it. Got the best of the, uh, they were good fighters and they got, they got the best of these battles. They were not completely. Um, overtaken by the Greeks until the Romans came along. The Thracian tomb at Kazanluk in modern day Bulgaria. Another scene from the tomb of Kazanluk in modern day Bulgaria. Another scene from the tomb of Gazanluk with a charioteer. Horsemen in the tomb of Gazanluk. <laughs>